Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana and today we'll be talking about my debuts of 2024. Let's get going. There's actually quite a lot of debut authoring, authoring, authors coming up in 2024. Of course, some of them have already came up, but we're just gonna move on forward. So, there's some pretty good books and I'm kind of, most of them I'm excited for, but let's just see what we have. <laughs> So my first one is Earth Flowing by Frances Wren is coming on April 16. When Ethan saves the life of a fire starter, it's nothing unusual. He's the only healer on call at the hospital, and that gunshot wound isn't going to regenerate itself. But her patient, his patient turns out to be Connor Arden. Here is the pharma, pharmaceutical and fire controlling Britain's wa water supply. Her transgender is a man who A. starts sending Ethan flowers at work, B. seems terrified of a secret, and C. has the cheekbones and earnestness to make up for both. Ethan indulges in what he thinks he will be a brief harmless romance, but is swept in a deadly collision of a project earth flowing, the largest reconstruction tender since model clawed its way out to the rising sea. Determined to find the money only is a journalist who finds a corpse at the end of a too convenient tip. The fate of water and who profits might depend on the perennial question. Has Ethan lost his mind or is he just an idiot? Quite an interesting summary, I would say. <laughs> I don't think I actually ever had read a summary like that, so that was quite interesting. My next one is A Letter to the Limitless Deep by Sylvie Cathwell. It will come out on April 25th. A beautiful discovery outside the window of an underwater home prompts the reclusive E to begin a correspondence with renowned scholar Henry Clee. The letters they share are filled with passion, at first for their mutual interest, and then invariably for each other. Together they uncover mystery from the unknown depths, destined to just from the underwater world they both eagerly fear and love. But by no mere consequence, a sea quick destroys E's home, and she and Henry vanish. A year later, E's sister Sophie and Henry's brother Villain are left to solve the mystery of the sibling and disappearance and with the letters, sketches, and field notes left behind. As they uncover the wondrous love the sibling shared, Sophie and Villain learn the key to their disappearance and what it couldn't mean for their life as they know it. That sounds so good, oh my gosh. And my next one is Foul Days by Genova de Mova. It will come out on June 25th. As a witch in the walled city of Chernograd, Corsada has plenty of practice faming nostalgic cars, finding kinky motors and brewing the cantaloupe repellent. There's only one monster Corsada can't defeat, her ex Zimi, known as the Tissan of Monsters. She's defied him one too many times, and now he's hunting her. Betrayed to him by stumbling close to her, Costello's only hope is to train her shadow, the source of her powers, for a legal passage across the well to Bel Belograd, where monsters can't follow. Life in Belograd should be sweet, but Costello soon develops a fast-acting version of the deadly wasting sickness that stalks the shadowless witches, and only reclaiming her magic can cure her, to trace her shadow, she will have to team up with the suspiciously honorable detective investigating the death of the smuggler who brought her across the wall. Even worse than working with the cops is that all the close points in a single direction. One of the Zemi's monsters has a found crack in the wall, and Kosala's magic is now in the Zemi's hands. My next book is Masquerade by O. Sangayomi. Ondo's hometown of Timbuktu has been conquered by the warrior king of Yorimbaland. Already shown the social fathers, living conditions for Ododo and the other women in her blacksmith guild grow even worse under Yoruba rule. Then Ododo is abducted. She is raced across the Sahara to the capital city of Sangati, where she is shocked to discover that her kidnapper is not other than a vagrant who had visited her guild just days prior. But now that he is swallowed in riches rather than rags, Ododo realizes he is not a vagrant at all. He is a Maori king, and he has chosen her to be his wife. It comes out on July 2nd. My next book is Girls Who Burn by M.K. Pagano. The summer before her senior year, Annie held the worst words she could think of at her sister, and hours later, Fiona was found dead at the bottom of her ravine. 
The police will her get an accident, but Biden has never bought it. Her ballet progeny sister didn't slip and fall. She was pushed. Annie's number one suspect, Thatcher Montgomery, the rich boy down the street who always had a thing for Fiona. No one believes her, least of all Thatcher's cousin Seth. Annie's childhood rival and the boy she always loved to hate. Arguing with Seth is easy. Living with her own questionable choices involving Seth the night Fiona died. Much harder. It comes out on July 16. My next book is The Girl with No Reflection by Cashier Show. Princess Ying Yu believed in love once upon a time. Yet when she's chosen to win the crown prince, Ying's dreams of a fairy tale marriage quickly fell apart. Her husband, Tumi, is cold and indifferent, confining Ying to her room for reasons he won't explain. Worse still are the rumors that swirl around imperial whispers, are seven of the royal brides who, after their own weddings, mysteriously disappeared. Left alone with only her own reflection for company, Ying begins to see things, strange things, movements in the corners of her mirror, colorful light upon its surface, and when on the eve of her wedding she unwillingly tears open the gateway, she is pulled into a mirror world. But there is dark, that this realm is full of sentient reflections, including the magnetic mirror prince. Unlike his real world counterpart, the mirror prince is kind and compassionate, and before long Ying falls in love, the kind of love she always dreamed of. But there is darkness in the new world too. It comes out on August 6th. My next book is Of Jane and Dragons by Emma Shin. 18-year-old Ayuri and Ying dreams of becoming a brilliant engineer just like her beloved father, but her life is torn apart when she arrives a moment too late to stop his murder, and was, lets this killer slip out of reach. Left with only a journal containing his greatest engineering secrets and a Jane pennant, snatched from the assassin, Ying vows to take revenge into her own hands. Disguised as a brother, Ying heads to the capital city, and discovers that the answer to fighting who killed her father lies behind the walls of the prestigious Engineers Guild, the home of a past her father never wanted to talk about. With the help of an unlikely ally, Ayogiya Yi Yang, a Texington, but very handsome young prince, Ying must navigate a world fought with rules, challenges, and politics she can barely grasp, let alone understand. Comes out on June 18. My next book is Perfect Little Monsters by Cindy R. X. She. Ella Moore was the most popular girl in school, and also the most hated. When she's murdered at her own party, there are too many suspects to count, and too many people who think she deserved it. The police prime suspect is a new girl, Dawn Foster. She was the last to hand Ella a drink on the night Ella died. Plus, all of Ella's friends with the motive for wanting her dead are more than willing to implicate Dawn. But Dawn refuses to go down with the fight, she's determined to clear her name. As she delves deeper into the past, she discovers that Ella and her friends had enemies, and someone is up for revenge. She must uncover the truth before the police arrest the wrong suspect and before the next person dies. It comes out on May 7th. My next book is The Jin Daughter by Nani Ohana. Nadine is in Jin task with one job, telling the stories of the dead. She rises every morning to gather pomegranate seeds, the souls of the dead, that have fallen during the night. With her daughter Layla and her side, she eats the seed and tells the stories. Only then can the departed pass through the final gate of death. But when the seeds stop falling, Nadine knows something is terribly wrong. All her worst fears are confirmed when she is visited by Kamuna, Death herself and ruler of the underworld, who reveals her desire for someone to replace her. It is Layla she wants. Nadine will do whatever it takes to keep her daughter safe, but Kamuna is, has little patience and with this drive to get what he, she has come for. Layla's fate, meanwhile, hangs in the balance. It comes out on April 2nd. My next book is called The Scarlet Throne by Amy Leo. Felisa is a living goddess. She cho chosen by the gods to depict depends birth, mercy, and punishment from her place on the Scarlet Throne. But her reign hides a deadly secret. Rather than channeling the wisdom of an immortal deity, she harbors a demon. But now her price are growing sus suspicious. When a new Gambetta is selected to take over her position, Benza and her demons strike a deal. To magnify his power and help her wrest control from the price, she will sacrifice human lives. She will do anything not to end up back on the streets, forgotten and alone. But how much of her humanity is she willing to train in her quest for power? Deals with demons are really so simple. 
it comes out on September 10th. My next book is The Last Dragon of the East by Katrina Kwan. At the spire, at a young age of 25, Sai has led a quiet life, keeping the family tea house up and running, even if that means ignoring the past you notice and taking care of his aligned mother. But he has not a not so secret gift that has parlayed into a side career. He was born with the ability to see the threads of fate between soulmates, which lends itself nicely to matchmaking. Sai has thus far been content not to follow his own thread, the only one he's ever seen that's gray and fraying. But Sai's ordinary existence is about to be turned upside down by a pair of shining dragon scales. When his mother's doctor sells them to him, claiming them as a miracle cure, Sai is pretty sure he's being scammed. When the medicine actually works and the terrifying ruthless emperor catches wind, Sai is thrust into the search for a dragon long thought extinct and the, that will lead him into the throes of a brewing wall and deep into foreign lands, facing down challenges both magical and mortal on an expected adventure. And for the very first time, as his own thread of fate begins to move, he may be able to solve the mystery of his fatal one on the other end of the line. That sounds so great, I'm like I'm so excited for this one. It comes out on October 8th. My next book is The Wilderness of Girls by Madeline Claire Franklin. After being placed in her foster care, Ree is hungry for a fresh start and begins working at the Happy Valley Wine Life Preserve. While in the woods, she stumbles upon a surreal sight, a pack of wolves guarding four feral and majestic girls. After Ree gains their trust and reveal that they are princesses from another land, raised by a magical prophet they call Mother, and they're convinced we is the lost fifth sister. I sure want to believe we ushers the girls to civilization, where they met with social uproar and scrutiny, dubbed by the venomous media true crime junkies as the wild girls of Happy Valley. Desperate to return to the kingdom, the girls took, look to me for help. We knows the girls are deluded, but at the same time she's drawn in by the boldness and authenticity, Traits she is afraid she has lost within herself. And when we witnesses strange phenomena she can't quite explain, the line between fantasy and reality grows blurry. It comes out on July on June eleventh. And my last book is The Hollow and the Heart by Camilla Reigns. Sixteen year, year old Myers Warren hails from a long time line of psychics. Resigned to a life in the not especially profitable family business. Miles is perfectly happy, thank you very much. That is so weird when authors put that in. Except for the part where he's constantly exhausted from long nights digging up graves, hiding his sexuality from his family, and unable to fulfill his dream of going to art school one day. Perfectly happy. But Miles' come from the home routine is interrupted when a promotion has of a violent supernatural murder. He soon discovers that the victim is none other than Gabriel Hawthorne, whose family had a mysterious de decades-long feud with Miles' own. Gabriel is everything Miles expects from a hard time, rude, snobbish, and irritatingly good-looking, but Miles isn't just going to stand by and let someone murder him. The two form an uneasy alliance, trying to solve Gabriel's murder and prevent it from taking place. It comes out on October 22nd. Okay, and those are all the debuts that are coming out this year. Of course, more will just keep on coming. But I'm excited for these. I think they're really, really cool. I'm especially excited for all the spooky reads. And, and as well, my book reading that's happening. I am so excited for book reading this year. So, I've actually just started filming like one video. So, so you know those videos where I go out to a location to read. So, yeah, I actually filmed in that because just because like those sort of locations do take more time than just standing here and reading, you know what I mean? So that's why I started only for those videos, but I am excited for them. So they're gonna be great. But otherwise let me know what you are excited for the debuts and please like, comment and subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post and I will see you on my next one. Bye!